Hi everybody! So yesterday for Make It Month 7 I showed you how I made this little tube riveted beach pebble ring using cold connections. Um, so in this case, little tube rivet. <laughs> rivet. So um, today what I thought I'd do, because a few of you asked about sea glass and I did drill a little bit when I was drilling this one. Um, so I've got this on the bench ready to use. I did it in exactly the same way as this one, so little diamond tipped um, burr and you have to make sure this stays wet when you're doing it. So if you look back at yesterday's video if you're not sure. So I've drilled it all the way through and it is a nice tight snug fit to the wire that I'm going to use to make my rivet. And this time I'm going to show you how you can make a fancier rivet. So something with a little bit of decoration on it and I thought as well we'll do it as a little pendant instead. One with a bit of movement to it. So I'm going to use a little bit of brass and a little bit of copper to do this one. So what I thought was I could cut two bits of metal that are the same or similar shape to my piece of glass, rivet them all together so there's a bit of movement, the layers can um, splay apart. So what I'm going to do is take some masking tape, stick it on the surface of my metal, like so, just so that I've got a nice surface to draw on so I can see the shape easily and also this means I can draw on it with a pencil so I'm less likely to mark my glass when I draw around it compared to if I used a sharpie or something so I'm just going to pop my piece of glass on top of my metal and then draw around the outline of it with the pencil like so I'm going to do the same on the brass and then I'm going to just cut them out with the shears. So let's say I'm just going to cut them out with my shears. You would get more control if you use your jeweler's saw. Um, it's less likely to warp your metal but it's a lot quicker just to snip them out with a pair of shears and if they go a bit curly at the edges you just give them a little tap with your mallet and that will straighten them back out again. There we go, two little metal shapes matching the shape of my little piece of sea glass. So, as I say, they came out nice and flat. If they had walked with the shears, I would just get my mallet, give them a little tack on a steel block. Um, but what I do need to do is give the edges a file. So I'm going to use my full size file, and if I drop the camera down, you can see a bit better. Full size file, I'm going to pop my bit of metal into a little notch that I filed on the end of my bench peg and it's push and lift. Push and lift because remember most files only cut on the board action. I'm just following the curve of the metal of the file. I'm going to keep doing that until I've got a nice smooth edge. I filed my little metal shapes so now what I'm going to do is take my sea glass, hold it in line with the shape outline that I've cut. Go, just sort of sat on top of there. And then I'm going to take a scribe or a center punch. Now normally you'd want to keep your scribes super sharp, but this is nice and thin and I tend to use it more for a center punch because I don't like scribing things. And I'm just gonna hammer like so. And what that does is makes a little mark if you can see it, little centre punch mark where I need to drill the hole so that this all lines up. So, got my drill, and I'm going to masking tape a piece of metal to my wooden bench pin. There we go, little holes in them now, so now they should stack together and fit onto the wire that I'm going to use for my rivet. A bit of a tight fit, but that's what we want. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ball the end of this wire. Um, 
by melting it with the blowtorch. So if you come over here, I'll show you how to do that. Lots of people struggle to um, ball up the end of brass wire. It's a lot more resistant compared to silver or copper. Um, but the trick to it is to use lots and lots of flux. So basically you just need to keep it clean. So I'm going to go in with the tip of my torch and just hold the tip of my torch on the end of my wire until it starts to melt. Now this is a really chunky bit so it's probably going to take a little minute. That's it starting to go. There you go, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to turn my torch off. Quench this in the cold water. And it's not too dirty, so I think I'll just sand it clean rather than bothering to put it in the pickle. There we go. So it actually looks really cute just as the little ball. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to flatten this out a little bit and add some texture to it. So to do that, you could do it in a vice or a microwave. We have one. Um, or more traditionally, they would do it in a little draw plate. So these are designed for drawing wires through, and I've got some bigger ones somewhere. Um, but I'm going to show you a cheaper option. So if you don't have any of those more specialist tools, for a couple of pounds, you can go down to a DIY store and get a drill gauge. So it's a little thing that you insert drill bits into so that you can tell how big they are. Um, but they are perfect for doing this on. So you just find the hole that fits the snuggest and then put it on a secure surface and then I'm going to get my hammer and I'm just going to flatten it out a little bit. That's it starting to go but it'll be a lot quicker if I go outside and do this on my anvil so I'm going to show you that. I keep my anvil in the garden because there's no room for it in the shed. It was my granddad's, so you can see how rusty it is. Thank you, Lola, for helping. Um, but most anvils come with a little hole in them, so that is good for popping your excess wire in. So now it's on a slightly hard base, and I can go back to my hammering. See it's starting to flatten out. If I wasn't doing this one-handed, what I would be doing is turning this with one hand as I hammer. Ooh, I have to get a more even finish. So I'm going to carry on two-handed without filming. So now that little ball's been completely flattened out with the hammer, so it looks like a little nail head. And it should slot on here. There we go. So now I just want to put a little bit of detailing on here so it's not just a completely flat pad. So what I'm going to do is I need to grip this in some way. So I'm going to use my mitre jig. But like I say, anything that will hold it securely in place, vice, anything like that. And I'm going to choose a metal stamp, a design stamp, but you could use um, nails, old screwdriver sets, centre punches, anything just to add a little bit of texture. I've decided to go for a little flower shape, so I'm going to make sure this is secure. I'm going to hold the punch where I want it to be, and I'm going to hit it with a big old hammer. One of these days I'm going to find a proper setup for this camera that doesn't just mean it falls over every time I hammer something. Anyway, there you go. So little nail head rivet and it's got a little flower on it. I'll show you a close up in a bit. But now I can stack my elements together again. There we go. So all I need to do is, same as last time, I need to trim it so there's one mill sticking out, file it flat, and then I'm going to do my hammering to rivet the other side, but I need to protect the glass. So 
remember when you cut it down to use your saw, not the shears, because otherwise you'll just end up smooshing it. It's a technical term. <laughs> need to going to do a little bit of filing just to make sure the top of that rivet is nice and flat and remove any burrs that might stop it from slotting back through the holes So this is already to rivet with the hammer, same as we did in the previous videos. The difference is I have something delicate on the other side, which could potentially smash if I hammer it. But hopefully the thickness of the rivet on the bottom should protect it. So I'm going to do my hammering on my wooden peg this time rather than on the steel block, just because the wood is softer, so less likely to damage the glass. Um, you could put a little bit of leather down. Um, try using a sandbag but I think that would just be too soft so I'm going to go on my wooden peg and same as before I'm going to do hammer in one direction and turn it and hammer the other way so doing that cross shape with a cross plane hammer or like I say if you'd rather you could use a ball pane hammer and just hit it straight down Of that wire. I don't want this one to be super tight because I want to keep movement. There we go. So I've popped a little hole in the top of the back layer, the copper layer, attached a jump loop and threaded it onto a chain. So there's a little fancy rivet, cold connection necklace, kinetic necklace because all the elements spin and turn. So let me know what you think. I'm going to do a close-up of the little um the detailing where I'm not wearing it just in case it's not quite in focus um, but I hope you like it a little rivet on the back super easy really fun no heat or blow torches required which is always great considering how hot it is at the minute um, so yeah let me know how you get on there we go so little fancy textured rivet riveted on the other side not too tight so that there's some movement to it but as you can see it's a little bit awkward to move because it's getting that balance where it's not too tight you can move it but you don't want it being so loose that it moves on its own too much when you're wearing it you want to be able to pose it in the shape that you want it to be seen yeah good fun to make really easy and it's just a way of adding a bit more detailing to your rivets if you want to. <laughs>